That parable is really intense when you think about it. The story is straightforward in terms of we as the people need to forgive because God has already forgiven us. However, just because it is upfront for us doesn't mean that granting forgiveness is easy all the time. As I read through the parable myself, the question for me really became apparent quickly to God. Okay, fine, forgiveness is what we need to do, but how do we do this exactly, God? I'm glad past me asked this question because now I sit here to talk to you today about how to forgive someone using the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu's book, The Book of Forgiving, that has a fourfold path to forgiving someone. I'll be giving a personal testimony that will also give you an example of how to live out this path from Tutu. I remember meeting the man my mom had been seeing since separating and eventually divorcing from my pops. I'm going to call him G. At first, he seemed pretty nice, clean cut, a police officer. So I thought if my mom was happy, I would like the guy. I really wanted my mom to be happy. Sadly, the honeymoon phase would be over soon enough. Strike one was that we were not allowed to speak Spanish in the house around him, which if you know me, I'm extremely prideful of being Mexican American and was taught both English and Spanish at the same time growing up, thanks to my Nana Lucy. We were also taken out of bilingual school, so I lost Spanish so, slowly but surely. Because of this, I'm learning how to become more fluent again, thanks to my pop's side of the family. Strike two. When I came out as gay before I would realize I'm trans, he and my mom tormented me not only at home but at school. At school, my mom worked at my high school, so she told my teachers that I couldn't be around my then-girlfriend and would walk me to class, and I would have to eat lunch in her office as punishment. At home, I was called derogatory words, made to do all my siblings' chores so I didn't have time to do my homework, which for me was killer because I was a good student. Had it not been for my teachers, I don't know what I would have done. A year after the year I call it hell, my mom would eventually accept me for being gay, but G wouldn't. Strike three, G's drinking was getting worse and I noticed it before anyone in my household would. Before his drinking got worse, we would already have daily arguments, but his drinking made them unbearable where my mom would get in between us. Eventually, it would lead me to be living with my Nana Lucy my senior year on the couch because my mom wouldn't leave him and I was done. I was so much happier then. Strike four, fast forward to college. I was no longer there for my mom or siblings and they finally saw G's alcoholism and abuse for what it was. This led me down a rough path in college because I knew all too well he was targeting my brothers, but eventually I, with the help of the Dean of Students and friends, would get myself in therapy. Strike five, after being given an ultimatum to leave my mom and siblings and move out, G moved to Oklahoma, but my mom with my younger two siblings would eventually move there, leaving my brother and I in Kansas. In 2016, thankfully my mom would divorce him after almost 10 years of marriage and leave him. In July of 2020, G would die from complications caused by alcohol. I found myself sad despite pretending like I didn't care one bit after all the abuse he and my mom had caused me. I also bought flowers for his funeral but couldn't get myself to go. I was lost in how I felt compassion, but I did. I even found myself I even find myself now reminiscing on some rare good memories with G and my mom and I am confused by it. I am even more astonished at myself that I said the words, I forgive you out loud regarding G. My only regret was that I never actually told G any of this, nor did I let him know that I forgave him. The story of the Bible that we have for you today is clear about the need to forgive others who have hurt us. I still find myself processing through what it means to forgive G or anyone for that matter. A while ago, Pastor Allen gave me the book by Desmond Tutu called The Book of Forgiving, which has helped me understand what it means to forgive G or anyone else for that matter. Today I want to share with you the fourfold path to forgiveness that this book describes. Tutu discusses a fourfold path to forgiveness, which is telling the story, naming the hurt, granting forgiveness, and renewing or releasing the relationship. I'll tell you about each step and what Tutu himself says, and I will talk about my path through each step.
The first step, according to Tutu, is telling a story. By telling a story, Tutu says we get our dignity back. The first thing one needs to do is tell the facts. How do you remember the story? Then if others were around you when the incidents happened and they are affirming, this could help you put together what happened fully. The cost of not telling your story is your sanity and happiness. The other step you can take by telling your story is telling the perpetrator or person who has hurt you. If you don't feel comfortable or safe doing that in person, then you can do so through a letter. Sometimes even the act of writing a letter but never actually sending it can help you get your feelings out. Ultimately, it's up to you. In some cases, it's helpful to tell your story in public in whatever manner that you view. The more you tell your story, Tutu says, the more you understand the wrongdoing. For me, telling my story was at first only telling my friends about the various things that G would do while they were happening. After we stopped having any connection to each other, I was able to tell people around me who seemed empathetic and compassionate. Eventually, I was able to tell my story publicly like I am right now. It took a whole lot of work to get to this point, especially now since G is deceased. After telling the story, the next step Tutu discusses is naming the harm. He first discusses why behind naming the harm. Simply put, the reason is to allow us the space to repair what has been broken, whereas keeping it bottled inside will just eat us alive in some shape or form. Tutu also explains whether we realize it or not, we do not need this fourfold process every time we hurt. It may just look different when we name the hurt, depending on how much it affects us. He reiterates again that never naming the hurt eventually will catch up to us and just dealing with it in a healthy way is better. Naming the hurt for me wasn't so hard until it got to the part of feeling everything G had done to me. I told you the story because I know there may be someone in my position dealing with emotional, verbal, and physical abuse or quite possibly someone who may have dealt or deal with someone who has addiction. I also tell the story because it helps me with coping with the trauma I endured during the period of my life. It is a healthier way of dealing with it. Between talking about it in therapy and talking about it with you all, it really truly helps as Tutu says it does. The third step that Tutu discusses in his book is granting forgiveness. Before I go on, I again want to say, I do not want to push any of you into thinking you have to forgive someone if you are not ready by all means. Notice it took me at least 12 years to deal with this and I finally forgave G. It is the process that needs to be between you and God. By forgiving, we are giving ourselves the space to grow as humans. The other thing that granting forgiveness does is noticing that we have a shared humanity. The person who harmed us, we start to realize, is also a human being who has a story that could affect the why they have harmed us. While it doesn't excuse the harm that they have caused, it provides the person who was harmed context to what led the person to cause them harm. As Tutu says, the roles could be reversed. We could also be the ones who harm others. Therefore, we have to remember we are all part of the same human race. In finding humanity, Tutu says, we are able to show compassion and empathy. Now that we have told our story and named our harm, we need to accept the frailty and vulnerability of others, Tutu explains. I never thought of it this way until the reading this chapter. The third step was the hardest part for me in forgiving G. For a long time, I blamed myself for the issues I was having on the trauma I experienced because of G and my mom. It took years upon years to step up and acknowledge what had happened, sit with it, and forgive. I can say I have forgiven both my mom and G, but as Tutu talks about that feeling of peace, I too have felt that weight lifted off my shoulders when I not only forgave them, but myself. I promise each of you that sometimes it'll take time to forgive but once you do, you'll feel so much better. You're already a strong human going through what you have gone through, but, you, but forgiving someone takes much more power and strength.
The final step of the fourfold path is renewing or releasing the relationship. After you have forgiven the person or persons, you have the choice to continue the relationship or not. Only you can make this choice for yourself. No one else can. You also in this last step need to figure out what you need from this. Do you need an apology? A reason why? Monetary compensation? Only you know the answer to this question. Tutu says, once you can ask for what you need to heal, you no longer are the victim of pain in terms of your fate. You are choosing your fate. Step four took me a long time to come to terms with when it came to G and my mom separately. I think G was easier to forgive because he was out of my life and I knew I didn't need to renew a relationship with him. In terms of my mom, it was much more complex. There were countless times where I thought I didn't know what I wanted to do because she is my mom. Since she finally left G, then I also apologized to us kids for what had been done, I was willing to renew the relationship. All I wanted from her was for her to own up her part in the nightmare that was my life for years. But to really renew the relationship, I also knew that I had to apologize for my part. I realized that I too made her life hard. I truly believe my relationship with my mom is stronger because we did the steps too too laid out without us knowing we had done them. Reading stories from the Bible like the one for today made it clear that forgiveness is a core part of being a Christian. Reading Desmond Tutu's book helped me understand what it practically means for me to forgive people in my life. This helped me understand how I have hurt others and how I can ask others for forgiveness from the people that I need to. What I have learned through the churches that I have been a part of over my life is that Jesus was able to forgive those who criticized him people like his own disciples who even denied knowing him, and even people who crucified him. To be a Christian is to learn how to be more like Jesus and to forgive like Jesus. What I have learned more recently is that if we are able to walk in the fourfold path and actually forgive as Jesus forgives, then we are able to have this inner peace that will allow us to be the people that is the Holy Trinity wants us to be in this world. Beautiful, loving humans. Amen.